talk a little bit about the cerebellum. Remember the cerebellum, you have fat guys eat donuts. You have stigio nucleus, globus, umbelliform, dentate. In that order from medial to lateral. The stigio nucleus controls more what? Your spine, your spinal musculature. Excuse me, so your posture. The interpose, the globus, globus and boliform, are more for exact movement of your limbs, specificity of your limbs. The globus is more your shoulder, and boliform, your elbow. Dentate is kind of more down here with your fingers, but the dentate is the biggest nucleus because it's the main thing that fires back up to the brain. That's why we say with DDK, instead of just doing it here, you can further localize the lesion by bringing them in here. Now you're taking the shoulder out of it. If it gets better, you know the lesion is more midline. If it gets worse, it's more lateral with this as far as cerebellum goes. <clears throat> and remember, the more, the further you can localize something, the better it's going to be for you trying to rehab it. Now, so, with eye movements, what part of the cerebellum is involved with controlling eye movements? Is it more medial or more lateral? Medial, right? Dorsal vermis and vestigial nucleus. You don't get more medial than that. And even the flyers. So, if somebody has posture problems, all right, cerebellar related, do you think you could use eye movements to treat them? Yeah, right? Because you're going to be stimulating the vestigial nucleus that's really controlling that spine. So if you're, you can, if that's also what controls saccades, you can utilize that. So we're going to utilize it. Their role in saccades are for accuracy. So what you want to do, you're, if they have posture problems because they're cerebellum, they're definitely going to be dysmetric. <coughs> So what you want to do is you want to train them for their accuracy of their saccades. The way you're going to do that, same with any kind of treatment, you want to find out where their end range is before they crash. Or when I say crash, I mean before their that system or pathway crashes. So if they cannot make us, maybe they can't, they're dysmetric this far away of the saccade. Maybe they're dysmetric here. Maybe they're cool in here. So you want to start just before where they start breaking down and work that and work your way out. Or maybe just do smaller saccades instead of coming here all the way here, doing smaller saccades in that area where they have the breakdown. So if they have a breakdown out here, see if they can handle gazing out here and just doing small saccades here. See if they're cool doing that. And if they are, then you can do that and gradually get wider. Okay? That is going to further rehab the cerebellum. Something else, you know how we say, no, I'm sorry, in basic club, with posture, when you have your feet together, close your eyes. That initial sway is going to be side cerebellum, right? Let's take that a little bit farther. And depending, now if this is an athlete, you could find out where to see this, you would need like a cash flow. But if it's somebody that's got a lot, you know, they're not doing so well, they've got a lot worse of a lesion, you're going to see a, a sway in a particular plane. All right? Now, think about if. If you have a hyperactive left horizontal canal, remember they work in planes. You have your left anterior, right posterior, right anterior, left posterior. If you have, whether the person has a right, maybe they have for whatever reason, they have a right yaw. So just going throughout their day, they're constantly charging the right left anterior and right posterior more than they are the other side. So those are firing eyes. Or maybe it's due to a, um, a central mechanism and with the nuclei. Whatever it is, maybe it's just a bias. 
if you have higher firing, left anterior, right posterior, what happens with your left, if I fire my left anterior canal, as far as musculature, what happens? If I start falling forward this way, what's gonna happen? Posterior muscle, okay. You're gonna activate posterior musculature down here to correct yourself, right? Same back here. So if these are firing higher, when you are midline, you have your eyes closed, um, your, your body is still going to be, that's still going to be firing higher, so your musculature is going to be tonically firing to keep you from going in that plane. So what plane are you going to go in? You're going to go in the opposite. Alright? So if you see the person, close their eyes, if you give them long enough, let's say they start going in and it looks like this, forward to the right, back to the left. Think about now, remember this, this whole little deal? Stimulus comes in, same side cerebellum, ipsilateral, encephalon, cortex, pons, back over. Right? Think about that pathway when they're doing this. So they're going over here, they're going back. So when I go forward, what cerebellum is related with me going forward with right? right? The right side, right? What side cortex would be involved? Left. So what about going back into the left? What side cerebellum? The left. Left, what side cortex? Right, okay? Now, <clears throat> nine out of 10 times, you're gonna see a person in that, with that ellipse they have, it's gonna be more so in one particular aspect of that plane. So maybe they're going back and to the, back to the left, forward to the right, but they go more forward than they do back. What side are you thinking then is probably more efficient? That front side, right? So what side cerebellum would that be indicative of? Right. Right, what side brain? Left. Left, okay. So if they have this ellipse, back to the left, forward to the right, we're thinking that axis, but if they're more to the forward than they are the back, you're thinking right uh, cerebellum, left cortex. Now, if they're going, when they go more to the right, it's usually going to be more of a cerebellar aspect. If they have more of the posterior um, sway, you're going to be thinking usually more frontal. Okay? But either way, it's still that same. So let's say forward, they're more forward to the right. Whether it's more whether it's more frontal or cerebellum, it's it's still that same pathway. Right? But if it's, they're leaning back, if they're more posterior, you're thinking more so the front. <clears throat> um, so, how can we use eye movements to rehab that? So, let's say, um, let's say they're going more forward and anterior. I mean, more anterior and to the right. So, we're thinking more right cerebellum. How would we use eye movements to stimulate that? More right cerebellum, left mesencephalon, right, we'll make it easier, this will be easier. We'll say they're more left posterior. So right cortex. What what direction, if I want to stimulate the right cortex, what direction the eye movement am I going to do? For a saccade, left or right? Right. To stimulate my right frontal lobe. Oh, left, left saccade, right? <clears throat> so we're thinking right now, but we're going to say left saccade, stimulate the right frontal lobe. Now remember, so this is mesencephalon, this is pons. Remember that, say right, left. If I, superior nasal muscles are, so if I'm talking about my left eye, if I'm 
talking about my left eye. Four does which muscle? Superior. 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 And three, six does what? Lateral rectus. Three does everything else. But which three does the left superior rectus? Six. What's, you Function. should know this. What is the rule? All superior main muscles are innervated by contralateral side. All right? So even though three innervates all the rest of the muscles, the superior rectus is going to be innervated by this three. Okay? So you want to think about which nuclei are getting lit up. So I want to stimulate, what do we say? The right cortex, left cerebellum, right encephalon, right uh, cortex. So to stimulate the right cortex, I'm saccading to the left. Now, think about as far as directionality, what direction would stimulate the right side. So if I look, I'm just kind of to the left, and I'm looking up and to the left, what eye muscle on this side would do that? Superior rectus. What about over here? Superior oblique. Superior oblique. What side three is doing sir, uh, the superior rectus over there? Right. This three. What side inferior oblique? Three. So right here, you're stimulating this right mesencephalon. <clears throat> I think you used to ask me about this a lot as far as how to stimulate what area was where you're living. So Doing, you know you want to do a left of saccade because you want to stimulate the right cortex. Now you got to figure out you want to look up or down or straight over to get in this pathway right here. Well, you want to be same side as the cephalon, so look up and to the left is going to stimulate over here. Does that make sense? You also go down to the right. So, which arm muscle over here? Superior oblique. To go down to the left? Oh, you said down to the right? Yeah. So, so that's what arm muscle? That's the superior oblique. That's the right cortex. And what over here? Superior oblique. Right. What, what eye over here? So that's, I mean, what side? Right side. Right side. But that would have to be a pursuit, not a zakat, though, wouldn't it? Because you want to stimulate the right cortex. Did you guess that? If you're stimulating this side, the correct side, and then the cephalon, but what was the first step? Because more so, more important than here is the correct zakat for the frontal lobe. Because it's either frontal lobe, or cerebellum, and we said more posterior, so we want to stimulate, most important thing is stimulate the frontal lobe. If you do that right saccade, which side frontal lobe is that going to stimulate? Left. <clears throat> um, now, this can also be as far as where you're having them look as far as an adjustment, right? But you're not worried about the saccade aspect of it, you're just worried about directions of looking as far as where maybe the men's step along or the arms are stimulated. But, okay, so again, recap, when you do their sway test, you want to find out what the ellipse is. That, that plane is where the deficiency is, but you want to try to find which aspect of that plane they're going towards more. And that's the plane, and that plane of eye movements with the eye movements you want to do. So, anybody have any questions with that? We are good. Alright. Um, is there any questions with anything that we talked about so far? Treatments or.
So, for, but you could technically do a saccade. Uh, no, never mind. No. So, and why why we want to do a saccade in this scenario for a pursuit? More than more than two with that cerebellum, ten times cerebellum, not at much level. One is wrong part. Of the, even though you are still using the front eye for the ones, you're doing more parietal. But also, what's going to help that cerebellum more is the accuracy of the saccades. Right. So just remember. You can use the cards to treat midline cerebellum injuries, as far as making them more accurate. But before you would do that, what would you have to make sure is good before you do that treatment? Dates. 